Components in Webflow let you turn any element, including all its children, into something reusable. So for things like a nav bar or a card, you can create it once and you can use it on all pages in your site. The power here is that you keep not just the style, but most importantly, the content consistent. So if you make a change on any one instance of a component, it affects all instances of that component anywhere on the site. In this lesson, we're going to cover how to create a component. We'll talk about how to reuse a component, how to edit a component so it affects all those component instances, how to unlink that component when you no longer want it linked, and of course, how to create properties or overrides that let you change an instance of a component while keeping it linked to the rest of them so that things are even and consistent. Let's start with creating a component. Here's a navbar on a page. To create a component, let's just select the navbar and we can click Create Component. And we'll name it navigation. And that's it, one part down. We created the component. How do we reuse it? Well, let's go to another page. And if we navigate over to another page, we can now go over to components and drag in that navigation, the component we just created. We can do that right here at the top. And instantly, we see that the navbar is on this page too. That's two parts down. What about editing a component? Well, let's make a change. Let's change some of the content in this navbar. So to edit a component, all you do is double click on it. And now you're editing the component. So let's go in and move the button from one side to the other side. Now, why are we doing this? Why are we moving the button? First, it looks better over there. But second, it's because we're not changing any styling. We're demonstrating changing content itself. In this case, the order of elements. And here's the magic part. If we go over to the original page where we started, we can see that that button, its position is updated there as well. By default with components and all of their children, any change, whether it's a change to text, adding elements, moving elements, removing elements, all of that is kept consistent in every instance of that component. So let's move on to part four. If for whatever reason at any time you want to unlink any instance of a component, if you no longer want it tied to the main component, you can do that. With this component selected, let's right click and unlink this instance. And now changes to this content won't apply to the component. It won't apply to any of those other instances and changes to the component aren't going to affect this. It's unlinked. But let's move on to part five because one of the most common patterns for things like cards, for example, is to use the same structural layout for multiple elements while replacing things like content on different instances. So. Here's a layout with two card components side by side. Just like the navbar, we created a component and we're using it twice, but the information inside is identical. So how do we change it in just one of them while using the same structure in both? Well, let's go in, let's double click to edit. And since we wanna change the heading text in one of these, let's select the heading. In fact, if we change this heading right now without creating a property, notice how it affects both of them but we want something different on this instance. So for now, let's undo that change to both headings and redefine our goal. What is our goal? We want the text in this instance to be different from the other instance. So this time, let's go back in to edit this component, edit this instance. We'll select the heading, but instead of changing it, because right now it would change on all instances of the component, let's instead create a property. We'll go over to element settings and let's create a property for that text. So again, we're editing the component, the heading is selected, and we're going to create a property. We'll give the property a name, and now that we've created the property, we have the ability on any instance of the component to now override that text. So let's just escape out, so we're all on the same page here, and we can see both of these components, they still say the same thing, but we can go in by double-clicking on the heading. And notice how we can now change the text, we can override that text, and it only changes that one instance. And that's because there's a specific property we've added to that element, that heading element, that text property on the heading within the component. So let's try that again in another component. Let's go over to components and we'll drag in another card next to these. So it's now a three component design and the content in this one matches the first, the default component. That's because it's inheriting the default text. But same thing here, double click on the heading and we can edit that text too. And by the way, if we ever wanna change the default text on that heading within the property, we can do that too. 
Let's just double click to edit the component and instantly mass confusion. Except not at all, because when we go in to edit a component, it'll just show the default text. And over in element settings, this is where we can manage our properties, including going in and editing the text property. We can change that default text to say nothing at all, or we can type something out like join our fall retreat. And the default text on the component is hereby officially updated. Now, this is just the beginning with component properties. So we can add properties for things like visibility. So if we want, for instance, buttons in some of these cards, but not in others, we can create properties to change the visibility on the button or on any child elements of a component. But that's the basics of components in Webflow. We covered how to create components. We covered how to reuse them, how to edit them, how to unlink them, and of course, just a moment ago, we covered how to create component properties. We can override things like content on specific instances within those components, or set things like visibility using component properties. But that's an overview of components in the Webflow Designer.